The exploding science of artificial intelligence is, of course, making it possible to bring all kinds of new technology to light. In a recent YouTube video, Joe Rogan's uncanny AI-generated voice talks about everything from wanting to form a hockey team made up of chimps to being trapped in a robot. The voice, which sounds exactly like Joe Rogan's, was created by a company based in Toronto. Hashem Kadam is machine learning engineer at Dessa, the company behind the voice. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, so let's actually step back and say, at, at, I want to ask about Dessa, because this is one thing that you guys do, but you do a lot of things. What does What's Dessa's business model? Who, who you're working with? Sure. So this was actually a side project, but Dessa is a technology company that helps the world's largest organizations build real world value from AI. So we have a proprietary platform called Foundations, along with other products and tools that allow us to work with enterprises across various industries mm -hmm. and at any stage of the AI maturity. And right now we have a dozen or so clients across verticals like insurance, um, financial institutions, banks, telcos, energy, et cetera. So give me an example of how an insurance company would use AI uh, to make their products better. Sure. So um, a lot of times they have, let's say, they have to audit a lot of claims. And sometimes you want to know, you, you have a limited amount of resources to audit. What are the best claims to audit? What, what, which ones have, are most likely to have an error? And so uh, this is the, the early stage adoption of AI has been a lot about kind of making existing services better, uh, speeding up processes. That's not the kind of that's not machine learning, right? This is there's something much further down the road. Tell me about this side project and why you wanted to do it. Sure. So as many great things do, it started over a conversation over dinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, usually it's friendship or love. This in this case it was just this AI project. Um, I was, it was my colleague and friend, Joseph Palermo. His idea was to recreate this podcast using artificial intelligence. And why, first of all, how hard is that to do? It's not that easy to recreate somebody else's yeah, it was, voice it was really from tough. a machine. So would, would walk me through, did you know it was going to be that hard? When We had no idea what to expect going into it. And so how does a machine, machine learn to mimic somebody? Um, so there's a lot of great companies and teams doing this sort of work. Mm -hmm. And they do it in general, maybe not specifically to copy someone's voice, but they just build these text-to-speech um, right. systems in general, and that's what we leveraged. And so going from that, and there's obviously lots of great applications of text-to-speech and making it sound normal. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone from those stilted computerized voices to much more natural, usually women, but much more naturally sounding voices. Mm -hmm. In terms of actually making it sound exactly like somebody, I'm not a computer engineer, so don't mm -hmm. get too technical here. But what, what kind of algorithm do you build to get the modulation of somebody's voice and the pitch and the range and the tone, the very specific, unique characteristics that somebody uses mm -hmm. when they speak? So there, there's a lot of complicated machine learning stuff in the middle. But at a high level, it's the same as any other artificial intelligence algorithm. We just create these pairs of inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. In our case, it was text input and audio output. And we let the machine learn how to extrapolate or the general pattern between the input and output. So could this machine learn any voice? Is yes. it now something that could go mimic yep. anybody's voice perfectly? Yep. But right now, we need uh, quite a bit of data. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe in the future, we're only going to need a few seconds of audio to perfectly recreate someone's voice. And how might it be used? It could be used for a lot of good things. Yes. And it could be used for bad things. Yes. Let's start um, with the good. <laughs> Well, you could sort of dub movies or have some audiobooks instantly in, in any celebrity's voice you want. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it could use, be used for a lot of bad things as well, like fake news or mass um, mistrust. Right. Somebody could call me and it sounds exactly yeah. like my sister and it's not my sister. Exactly. I, how do you make sure, I mean, just from your point of view as an engineer who does mm -hmm. this, you did this, obviously, it sounds like for, because of the love of creating, right? You mm -hmm. wanted to see That's what right. could be done and so you did. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the possibility that it fa falls into the wrong hands? Right. So or even gets used in a way that you don't approve of? I don't think we're going to have a final say in that. I mean, I, I, it's going to be widely spread in the future. Mm -hmm. And as a society, I don't think we're pre prepared both philosophically, ethically, or legally. Um, for example, if I create an algorithm that could replicate your voice, um, can I use it to sponsor my business? So it's not you saying it, it's my computer that's generating this audio. Or even further, it could be similar to your voice, but not exactly. And so do we need metrics for how similar voices are now? So it's, it's a complicated It causes part. confusion, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, but sorry. So one, one way we're tackling it mm -hmm. is uh, we're, we're spreading awareness like these conversations. Yes. But we've also built um, an artificial intelligence model that predicts whether vo voice audio is real or fake. And I think we have a really good one. And will, you, will this find its way into any of your existing products for any of your existing clients? Or will it stay? Potentially. Uh, we're, we're in talks, yeah. 
And just, we don't have a ton of time, but do you, big picture here, philosophically, are we ready for all of the changes that AI is going to bring? This is an example of kind of next level, mm -hmm. where for most of us, it's even hard to understand how hard this was to do. Right. It's going to change our world a lot. Are we ready for it? Well, the good news is that it's not coming right away, so we have some time to prepare. I don't think we're ready for it right now, but we should start preparing right away. And how do we do that? Um, I think the first step are conversations like this. Pay attention, mm -hmm. know what's happening. That's right. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Hashim Khadam is a machine learning engineer at the Canadian company DESA.